Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to go through a concrete thermodynamic example of air mixing in a space with a sensible load. This is a problem that was given in a graduate HVAC course. A room is supplied with 1,000 cubic feet per minute of supply air at 55 degrees Fahrenheit with an absolute humidity ratio omega of 0 0.0083. The room has a sensible heating load of 18,000 BTU per hour and there's another small 100 cubic feet per minute airstream of air that is saturated at 100 degrees Fahrenheit that is entering the room. Find the temperature and humidity ratio of the air that is exiting the room. Now with any thermodynamic problem, I highly suggest that we draw the thermodynamic system and I'm going to begin by doing that. So I've drawn our pseudo room here and let me our thermodynamic system is going to be defined by that room's boundaries, which I'll draw like this. And so let me draw what's coming into this space. We have some supply air, and we know that we have a volumetric flow of 1,000 cubic feet, cubic feet per minute, or CFM. We also know this temperature here. I'm going to call this state one is 55 degrees Fahrenheit and it has a humidity ratio of 0 0.0083. This is very common supplier temperature conditions for a space. Now there's something unique about this problem in that we also have some very, we have air coming from some sort of steam humidifier or we have at this state two, we have 100 CFM. I'm going to call this state two. And at that state, we also, this air is 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and it's also saturated. And when you hear saturated, you can assume that the relative humidity is 100%. And then what's exiting the room is what we want to find. We want to find the temperature. I'm going to call this state three and its humidity ratio. The other portion of this problem is that there's a there's a heat load in the space so we have some energy being generated in the space by people lights electricity some other energy is crossing the boundary and it's estimated to be 18,000 BTU per hour so what you should first notice is that at both of these states we have two intensive properties here and so we can fix this state so with this temperature and with this humidity ratio, we can know all the other psychometric properties. And I'll point you to my whole series of videos if you want to know more about how to calculate different properties from these different parameter values we have here. So some things of interest that we'll need will be the specific volume at these states. So I'm going to trust that you can find where to get these, but they're just calculations based on these other parameters. The specific volume at state one will be 13.143 cubic feet per pound. And at state two, this is going to be much greater. So, well, not much greater, but 15.083 feet cube per pound. And so in some, in some problems, we Often we'll assume the density doesn't change and density is the inverse of these values. But here we have some temperature at 55 and at 100. And so there is a, a fairly significant difference in the densities here. And so we're going to account for that. So in thermodynamics, our two main tools or conservation laws are the conservation of energy and the conservation of mass. And so let's, let's just start with a mass balance on the dry air. So the dry air that's coming in, the mass of dry air coming in has to equal the mass of air dry, mass of dry air coming out. So let's just do this and uh, dry air of one. I'm going to just use air, A for air, dry air. State two has to equal that coming out at state three. And we also know that if we take our volumetric flow and divide it by a specific volume, we are going to get a mass flow rate. So for these two terms, these two input terms, we have a volumetric flow and a specific volume. So we have this and this and this and 
this, and then we can calculate out that mass flow rate of dry air coming out. So if I did that, we would have, for instance, 1,000 feet cubed per minute, and divided by the 13.143, feet cubed per pound. And I'm going to leave the units off on this next one. They're the, the same types of units on the top and bottom. 0.83. This is Both these are giving pound per minute. The feet cubes are canceling. And if you do that, you'll get something near 82.7 pounds per minute, which if you multiply that by 60, will give you 4,963 pounds per hour, which will be a more useful term for us. So we now have the amount of the mass of dry air that is exiting this room. So the next thing we can do is we can apply an energy balance. And in this energy balance, we are going to have four different terms. We have energy related to the flow of mass from this stream. Uh, flow of mass of this stream, so that's two. We have this heat generated within the space, that's the third parameter. These are all ins, one in, two in, three in, and that has to balance with the energy being exited from this control volume, which will be with the mass of the air. So we, we will know that the energy of the mass coming in from stream one will be really related to the mass flow rate of air times that its enthalpy, at state one plus m dot of the air at state two plus we had that generation term and that all has to equal uh, the energy exiting so we have all these enthalpy terms now what's going to be important for us is that we need a relationship between these enthalpy terms and temperature and there's two ways you could go about it I'm going to go with a simpler approach where I'm just going to assume that enthalpy is just related to the dry air portion. And I'm going to be able to do this and it's going to be very a very good approximation because there's no moisture being removed from the system. There's not no air is going to be condensed out. We have saturated air here, but it's being mixed with drier air, so it cannot it's not going to become super saturated during this process. And so we can use this relation here where the enthalpy will simply just be the CP of air, which is around 0.24 BTU per pound degree F times some temperature. Now, if you wanted a very slightly more accurate way to go about it, we could define our enthalpy per unit dry air as uh, we could take this total enthalpy per unit mass of dry air as the enthalpy of the dry air plus the omega term times the enthalpy of the vapor. And if there are approximations where this HA term would be our 0.424 times T, and this term here would be omega times 1061 plus 0 0.44 times our temperature. And this is dealing with the latent heat of vaporization, and this is the CP for water vapor. Now, because we have a moisture balance across, these terms, if you do this, would actually completely cancel out. And you'd be left with an omega times 0.44 T term on all of these enthalpies. And what you'd find is that because this these enthalpy or because this absolute humidity ratio is small, this term dealing with the vapor becomes negligible. Now, this formula is what is used to get the enthalpies from a psych chart or from a program of typical um, HVAC calculations. So if you get these H values from a chart or from a program, you will need to use this more detailed equation for this enthalpy to get its temperature. And so you can't just go get these H's from the tables and then use this one on this side because you're going to be way off because at zero 
at zero degrees F, the enthalpy here for this dry air is just zero, but here you would be left with this 1061 times absolute humidity ratio. And so it can make a difference. So you can't mix and match. You have to have one definition, either this or this. And so I'm going to just stick with this value. So if I do that, I'm also going to replace these with the terms we know. So if I go uh, V, V.1 divided by this, I'm replacing this with CP T1. And I'll do this for state two is identical. And I have this generation term. Um, we know this term from our mass balance earlier. And now I have CP T3. And the only unknown in this formula is T3. So if I, you can divide both sides of this equation by CP and you would get something and we can, we can just solve in our heads for this. If we divide everything by CP, the CP would be under just this term here. And we have to divide this whole side of the equation by the mass flow rate. So if I did that, I would get something that looked like T1 plus, oh, this should be subscript 1, T2 plus that Q generated divided by CP because we divide by that everywhere. And then we divide by our total mass flow rate of state three. If you do that, you will get a value around 73.7. I don't want to be too particular with significant digits. So approximately 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty straightforward. So another formulation, we could have gone to a psych charter program, got these two values. And then for H3, we could have put in this formula here. Um, but at that point, we still need to get this humidity ratio, which we didn't know at this point. But with this, with this formulation of the problem, we didn't really need that. And if you put, if you, the difference between these is less than a tenth of a degree Fahrenheit. So um, it's a good assumption to make. While the difference we would have made if we assumed constant density would be much larger. So it was good that we considered the changes in density. So that's the first part of the problem. The second part of the problem deals with the humidity ratio exiting. So we have one more item left in our tool belt. That's the mass balance on the vapor. So we know the mass of the vapor at state one plus the mass of the vapor, mass flow rate of vapor at state two has to equal what is exiting. And we know a handy relation. So if we have the mass flow rate of the dry air and we have a omega term, we can get the mass flow rate of the vapor. So we can start replacing these things. So, and we know that mass flow rate of air is related to these volumetric flows. And so we can get a relationship that looks something like, and we multiply by omega one plus the same at state two, which we knew both of these from the psychometrics this was given, we could calculate that out. That is going to equal the mass flow rate of air at three, which we calculated multiplied by omega three, and this is what we want. So if we did that, omega three would be equal to, I'll just put numbers in slots for you. We would have the 1000 feet cube per minute divided by the 13.143, uh, that is feet cubed per pound. Um, and we would also have uh, help multiply this by 60 for minutes, 60 minutes per hour. That would give us pounds per hour. And we could do the same for the other stream of air. And I'll do this without units because there'll be the same multiplied by 60. And both of these terms would have to be multiplied by their humidity ratios. This is getting a little messy, so let me clean this up. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna erase this. Let's get these mass flow rates of of air here. Um, let's do that first. So mass flow rate of air at state one is just is just equal to this here, 4,565 pounds per hour, 
go ahead and just try and speed up some of these calculations for you. These should be, this is just algebra at this point. We know all of these terms except for omega-3, so we just have to solve for that. But I want to show a couple of the things you would need. This would be the mass flow rate of air at state 2. And so if we did that, we simply would have an omega-3 would be equal to this fraction. Let me draw this out. You have this expression here. This is our mass flow rate of our 55 degree air times its humidity ratio. So it's really like a weighted average. Uh, again, I didn't put that up here, but the omega at state two, you could go find this uh, from some psychometric calculations. It would be 0 0.043. So actually much greater than uh, the absolute emission absolute humidity ratio at state one. And if you do this calculation, you would get an omega three value of around 0 0.011. And so that is our answer for the second part of the problem. And we had our temperature here so that if you were sending in these conditions with this type of sensible load, that is what you could expect out. And so Again, the process I wanted to get across is this is simply thermodynamics. We drew a system, labeled our ins and outs. We did mass balances on the dry air and the vapor, and then we did a complete energy balance. And I was careful with my enthalpies, and we were able to figure out the values that we needed. So I hope that was useful. If you liked the video, please like it below and subscribe to my channel and tell your friends. And so till next time, uh, I will see you in the next videos.